Hey everybody, this is Tom from Rocket Restorations and we're going to do one more follow-up video from Barrett Jackson today and this is probably the last one we do from the auction. We, we covered most of it and we're going to do uh, an interesting subject today. What we're going to show you is what happens when there's VIN issues with the car of Barrett Jackson and it's again kind of a compare and contrast to Meekum. So a lot of people don't know this, but uh, there's a guy named Dave Wise. He's kind of considered, uh, you know, one of the experts in the in the in the Mopar hobby right now. You know, kind of used to be Galen Govier. Uh, Galen's still around, but um, you know, there's some people have had some problems with him, and Dave's kind of filled the void a little bit. And Dave is probably the most knowledgeable person about Mopars out there right now. Like he's done more research. He has books on them. He does an excellent job, and he's hired by Barrett Jackson to verify every Mopar that comes through. Um, I specifically remember I was down at Bird Jackson about 10 years ago, give or take. Uh, I don't remember the exact year. And I, I remember looking at a, a 70 Cuda and it was AER Cuda, it was pink. And I looked at the VIN and it, the, car, the car was built in October. Um, you know, you may not think that's a big deal, but the problem with that is pink didn't come out until February or March. And the AER Cuda didn't come out till February or March either. And it had the VIN. It was it was BS twenty three J, and it was sold through Barrett Jackson, and it was you know sold as a legit car. And, and it couldn't have been. The car was built four months before Pink production started. It was built four months before Trans Am cars were made. So someone made a fake VIN for that car, and the car ran through Barrett Jackson. I remember seeing that car at Barrett, and I was thinking to myself how can they let this car through? Like it's like, it was a hundred percent fabricated car. Like you didn't have to look at body numbers. It was just obvious by looking at it. And I do think it's interesting that I don't, I can't, I can't remember if it was the year after that, but it was very shortly after that where they hired Dave to check cars. And I've had several friends and, uh, and, and my brother has brought a car through there. He sold a 67 Cornet RT down there a few years ago. And I mean, Dave put that car through the ringer. Like he checked the VIN, he checked the VIN rivets, he checked the uh, the secret body numbers on a '67. It's behind the 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 bumper. Um, maybe one day we'll, we'll probably do a video on secret VINs one of these days because it's it's a subject that is important to know in this hobby and it's important to know where they are. Uh, and and it, it's it's just it's a good thing to know because when you're when you're checking out a car, it's very important to see that kind of thing. Um, but to circle back, so Dave checks every car that goes through there. And I, I know a couple years ago, there was a, I can't remember what the car was. It was a Ford look car, like a 60 Polara convertible or something like that. And I remember that he found that, that car was a fake. And there are state police for Arizona on the property at Bear Jackson. And they cut the VIN off that car. They literally cut the VIN off that car. And I, I remember hearing that and I was like blown away. So it's like, so if you have a fake car, if you made something like don't bring it to Barrett Jackson because Dave will catch it and you will get your VIN cut off and they will put an assigned VIN on it. So, but I just wanted to show you an example. There was a car in the show and they're straight up about it. They say it doesn't have a VIN tag and they're not trying to hide it at all. Um, but it's just kind of interesting to see what a value is for a car that the vintage has gone. And to bring it back, Meekum doesn't do this to my knowledge. Like maybe I'm wrong here, but like, you know, Uncle Tony just did a video on a motorcycle they sold at Vegas. That was a fabrication. Like they, it, it, it was gone. Like the, the VIN had been like ground off and restamped. It was a fake car. I don't think Meekum does this. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm not saying it's necessarily like, like, Oh, don't go to Meekum cause they don't check their cars. But I'm just saying like Barrett Jackson does hire experts. I know they have a Pontiac expert. They have a Chevy expert that goes through and checks cars. And on, and on those GM cars is much harder to verify them than on a Mopar. Mopar is actually really good, especially 69 and up, um, you know, VIN tags, fender tags, um, you know, like Barrett will not let you put in the description, that it's real if it isn't. Dave is the one who goes through and verifies every car when it goes through there. And it does add a layer of protection that Barrett Jackson has that Meekum does not. I mean, they have in their contract, obviously nothing's nothing's official, nothing's verified, 
but uh, but you know if a car runs through, if a Mokor runs through Barrett, it's at least been checked on that level. So I just thought this Coronet w was interesting. So uh, I, I did a little reaction when the auction was live about the price, and then uh, my brother got some video of it too. So it's kind of interesting. You can see it with the hood open, and I'll give you some more commentary on it with that. So this one's kind of interesting. So it's a 1969 Dodge Coronet RT. Uh, one thing Barrett does is they have Dave Wise, who's one of the, the Mopar numbers experts out there. He has to go through and verify every car in the auction. And this one is a constructor VIN. So it does not have a VIN on the dash. It has a assigned VIN on the pillar. And I don't know if that's something that Dave did or not. Um, but, uh, this one is not a real Coronet RT because it has a, an assigned VIN, which affects the value a lot. This one has a lot of red flags that I don't like. No blackout behind the grill. As you saw earlier on the quarter panel, the side marker should match the stripe. It did not. Um, honestly, 45K for this car is a lot. It does not look like the nice of a car and, you know, it doesn't have a VIN on the dash. It has a state assigned VIN on it, which is a huge issue for me. I would never touch a car like this. Uh, personally, but it's a nice chance to get a cheap car, maybe. Um, but yeah, but that's why that one sold for so cheap because it has some issues. So here's some video my brother got of this car at down at Barrett, and I, I really like getting this raw footage because it it shows you doesn't just necessarily show you what the auction wants you to show you. Um, but yeah, this one the VIN's gone on this, and the and the plot thickens a little bit on this. Again, you know, one thing we really do is we we keep track of this stuff. We we have a registry. You know, we, we know when these cars have sold before. So this car was actually on Bring a Trailer in January of 23. And guess what? It had the VIN at that point. So my guess is that the body numbers didn't match and Dave Wise probably had the VIN removed when a state assigned VIN given to this car. That would be my guess. I don't know that for sure. If anybody knows any more history on it, I'd love to hear it. But uh, that's what happens. You know, Dave Wise verifies these cars and if they don't match, they don't match. Um, you know, you look at this car, there's a ton wrong with it. You know, the, the spoiler isn't correct and has black hood hinges and, um, you know, the fender tags held on with the wrong screws, but you know, if the body numbers don't match, there's no way to prove this was a Coronet RT. You know, this car probably started out as a Coronet 440 or a Coronet 500 or something like that. And it should really affect the value. Uh, when it was on Bring a Trailer, it got up to 36,000 with a VIN at Barrett Jackson got 45 without, which in my opinion, is just way too much money for this car. I think this probably sold for twice as much of what it was worth. Um, you know, we just don't, I, I won't touch a car like this. If the body numbers don't match, it just has, there's just too much wrong with it. It's just not gonna, um, you can't trust this car. You can't trust what it was. You can't trust what it is. So uh, thanks to my brother for getting this video. And so just kind of want to bring this full circle now. So it's kind of amazing, you know, when, when we start these, we don't really, we just kind of randomly pick them, you know, it's like interesting cars and it's, and then we kind of do a deep dive on them and it's just kind of amazing what rabbit holes you go down. And it's like, you know, we started doing some research on this car and we found that, you know, it, it had a VIN tag in January of 23. And, you know, the whole point of this video is that, you know, Barrett Jackson verifies cars and, Again, I, I don't know this 100%, but I've heard this before, and I, I'm pretty sure, you know, Dave Wise tried to verify this car, and the body numbers didn't match, so he cut the VIN off. Um, well, he had the state, you know, Arizona State Troopers do it, but the VIN tag was cut off this car at Bear Jackson. And if you look at the dash picture, you can see the rivet still in the dash from where they cut it out. So I, I'm pretty sure that they cut it at Bear Jackson. So, you know buyer you know seller beware if you bring a car to bear jackson that has numbers issues they're going to take your vin tag and but you know on the other hand on the consumer side on the buyer side like i think that's a good thing because when you buy a car at barrett you at least know the numbers match i mean you can't tell if the car is nice you can't tell if it's a bondo bucket you can't tell if it's frame rails are bad but at least you can verify that when they sell a car it is what they say it is, is at least, you know, oh, it's at least a 69 Coronet RT, a 440 Magnum car. But on a car like that, if the body numbers don't match, there's no way to prove that was ever a Coronet RT. Like, you know, if we had a, you know, we have a customer looking for a 69 Coronet RT right now. And, you know, if he went up to me and told me to buy that car, like, it wouldn't matter how much money it was. 
I would tell him, no, like, don't buy that car. It's always going to have question marks following it now. Now that the Vintag's gone, like, there's always question marks on that car. Um, you know, I just tell him to find a better one. And it's, you know, and, you know, if you could buy that car for, like, fifteen twenty, sure, great. Uh, drive that car, drive the heck out of it, have fun with it, um, beat it up, drag race it, street race it. It'll be a ton of fun for that much money. But, you know, it, it was on Bring a Trailer for 36 and it didn't sell. And it got, you know, 45, 49, five with the juice at Barrett. And that's just way too much money for that car. That's, it's obviously a misinformed buyer bidding on that and bidding up, bidding it up way more than what it's worth. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of interesting. It's like, it's kind of funny, the rabbit holes you go down when you start, you know, researching and looking at these cars and, you know, see where the bodies are buried. Cause man, I mean, dude, these cars are 50, 55 years old now. It's like, and you know, it's what I, it's what I always tell customers, you know, everybody who wants to bring a car into rocket, they're always like, well, how much is it going to be? And just like, I can't tell you, like there's, there's 50 years of shade tree mechanics working on this stuff. You know, it's like, it's that famous internet meme where it's like, okay, my hourly weight's a hundred bucks an hour. Or it's 150. If you touch it, well, it's like, that's absolutely true. You know, it's like, you don't know what's going on. You know, there's always sins underneath the body. I mean, there's, there's that rare survivor that's original paint. And that's one reason we love original paint cars. Um, just cause there are no excuses, you know, it's like, you can know, always see what's there, but it's like, it, it doesn't matter. Like all these cars have been in an accident. All these cars have had body work done and it's like, and that's great. But like, but you can't sell a car as a 1969 Cornet RT if it's not, you know, if that started out as a Cornet 440 or Cornet 500, you know, back in the day, nobody cared in the seventies and eighties, these cars got rebodied all the time because nobody cared. But now when you're talking, you know, $50,000, it matters. You're talking about a 71 Hemi Cuda that's half a million dollars. Like the numbers matter. Like no, no matter whether you care about that or not, they matter in value. They just do. There, there, there's no way around that. Like, you know, if, if, if the body numbers don't match, it, it matters, you know, on that, 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 uh, that 68 Hemi Roadrunner we just got, um, at that estate sale, um, you can watch the video. It's in our, it's in our archive. We posted it last week. You know, super cool car, eighteen thousand original miles, and it was a drag race car from new, so it's had some metal cut out, of, cut out of it. But you know, I went up there for the preview day. You know, somebody asked me, "It's like, well, how did you know what it was?" Well, I went up there on a preview day, and I matched the fender tag to the body numbers, and I knew that was a legit car as soon as I saw it. And you know, I've been doing this long enough where I can see a car and can tell if it's a piece of junk or if it's or if it's not. You know, I I I, I just I just know by looking at it. You know, I've got my tools of the trade. I have a you know, a paint meter thing that like measures how much, you know, Bondo and paint primer on the car. Like I can use that just to help out, but like, you know, I've been doing long this long enough where I can kind of see it and kind of know. So, um, well, I hope you guys learned something today. Um, you know, I, I learned something today, you know, it's like, obviously I know what a assigned VIN is and all this, but like, I didn't really realize the history on the car, but yeah, I mean, it's like, it looks like to me that, you know, that car went to Barrett Jackson, the body numbers didn't match. And they cut the VIN off. And then what the Arizona State Troopers do is they, they do an Arizona signed VIN on it. And it has a bonded title now. And that car has a lot of issues. And I don't know. Whoever brings the car home is probably going to be disappointed when they, when they figure out what's going on with it. So, well, thanks, everybody, for watching. I think this is going to be our last Barrett-Jackson video. Uh, you know, like I, I've had fun covering the auction. Um, Meekum Glendale is going to be coming up pretty soon. So we'll uh, we'll probably cover that when that comes up. That's about a month away. Um, and yeah, hope everybody enjoyed watching. Uh, if you like our channel, please subscribe. Please like the video if you like this video. Uh, we'll keep on doing these. Uh, and thanks for watching.